one of those performances and one of those games where you'll always remember it. You'll remember where you were when you saw it. And I could almost feel like it was such an early kickoff in England. So it would have been, what, 9 a.m. in England, local time. So if you're yeah. just getting to work and you're turning on your computers and you're putting on this game thinking, oh, Argentina against Saudi Arabia, that'll be a walkover. Argentina flying at the moment, all that sort of stuff. They went into that game on this huge unbeaten run. And if they had have remained unbeaten in that game, they would have leveled a record with Italy. Um, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it against Saudi Arabia. Why couldn't they do it, Andros? I think Saudi Arabia not only shocked the world, but they shocked Argentina as well. Like I said before, Argentina were probably expecting um, resolute 4-5-1, 5-4-1, low block, not given any space between the lines. Um, and they were probably probably planning for that. But Saudi Arabia were completely the opposite. They were high line, high press, high energy, aggressive. Um, probably something we haven't seen from a Saudi Arabia side before. So I think they caught Argentina by surprise I think they caught them offside nine or ten times in the game three offside goals and they really did catch them by surprise mm. oh, another thing in the second half so those three offside goals in, in the first half we did un, our analysis on ITV and, and Roy Keane and, and um, Graham Sunas and Joe Cole were, were picking them apart and stuff and they said that the third one which was Messi's they said that was just sloppy like you know he should really time it better that was just sloppy um, and in terms of then the second half when Saudi Arabia came out one thing that they did do towards the end of the game, especially for maybe like the last 20 minutes or more, they just defended for their lives. And I've never seen anything like it, like the heroics of like throwing themselves on it. There was a massive goal line clearance, the goalkeeper as well. The goalkeeper colliding with one yeah. of his own players and, and basically, I don't know what he's done yeah. to him, but it was a Quite really a nasty, one, nasty injury to the face. Um, I just thought that they had something that Argentina didn't, which was just this heart at the time. Yeah, just like you says, um, I think the start of the game, they probably said to themselves, we're not going to just roll over today. Even if we go a goal down, we, we're going to keep going, keep fighting. We've got the home, basically the home attendant um, from the Saudi Arabia fans. They were that loud um, watching the game. But like you says, they were celebrating a tackle. You know, the keeper made a save and come through a punch. They're celebrating it. They actually believed and had that team spirit that they could hold on. You know, they played a high line, then they dropped back for the last 20 minutes. And Argentina didn't really look to me like they were going to break through. And we were watching the game with Dean Saunders at 2-1, and he was like, oh, I think this would be 4-2 Argentina. And I'm like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure like that like Argentina are going to get through. They made subs. Alvarez, come on, didn't really um, do anything in the game when you come on. But you've got to give the credit to Saudi Arabia. Aggressive, quick, and high energy. You know, all across the side. I think even in the last 20 minutes when they were forced back into into their own 18-yard but you can physically see one of the defenders literally scream at them to try and get up and try and get that high line that obviously the manager um, had set out um, beforehand. So, it, for me, it was a tactical masterclass from the manager. It was a clear yeah. tactic for... And it was incredible to see. You might have heard the doorbell go there, by the way. Yeah. We what, are is that, is that your delivery room? What was that? Was that my breakfast <laughs> Is that arriving? your McDonald's breakfast? <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I've been waiting all morning, my goodness. <laughs> but do you, do you think Andros did not like their next game, Saudi Arabia, is um, Poland? Poland. Yeah. So do you think now set up different you think Poland will well, to be honest I was probably expecting Argentina to come out in the second half and to be able to solve those tactical issues as players you know yourself as players when you're on the pitch you don't really see the overall outlook but you'd expect to come in at half time the manager or, or the analysts who now sit up in the stands to come down and say look this is what they're doing give yourself five yards don't be offside give yourself some time so that didn't happen, but you'd expect the Polish to do all their analysis to, to know exactly how Saudi Arabia are going to play. And I think um, Saudi Arabia will find it a lot tougher in their second game. Yeah. Were you surprised with just how organised Saudi Arabia were? Yeah, we spoke about off air. You mentioned the Qatari um, pools in their league for, for a month or so beforehand. I'll be very surprised. I'm sure the guys will find out. I'll be very surprised if Saudi Arabia didn't do the same because mm -hmm. they were so organised. They were so disciplined. They were so fit. You can tell they've been working on it time and time again on the training pitch. How difficult is it to keep up that performance? So say, for example, you've gone from a massive shock. You are on top of the world. You've then got to go again against Poland, which, which won't be easy. No. Do you kind of almost, you know, sometimes people say, look, you, that's your final. You've played your final already because you've hit massive heights. How do you follow it up, Gabs? I think, I don't know, something about the Saudi Arabia team watching them, I still think they can go and beat Poland or get a draw. I feel that they're going to look at that group now and think to themselves, we win one more game, we're through. You know, something they've probably never done. 
I'm not sure they've, they've, they've qualified before for their group. They've only won two games in something Exa like exactly. the last so, so they'll look at Poland and Mexico and think, we've got a great chance now. We beat the, the biggest team in the, the group. Why can't we go and do but it I again? I think that may be a problem because they may get carried away. They may start thinking, right, like you said, yeah. we can go and beat these sides. Whereas Argentina, they probably didn't believe that. So it can work both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All right, if you're Argentina and, and especially if you're Lionel Messi and you've had a game like that, and you're one of the favourites, right? So, yeah. and, and this is, in Messi's own words, his last World Cup, his fifth and last World Cup. What are you going to do now to regroup and go again in the same stadium against Mexico? I think, first of all, um, the whole squad of players, I think they would have got, you know, a lot, a lot of stick from Messi in the changing room. Yeah. But I think Messi's the sort of player you can't just think to yourself, oh, Argentina are out. He's got it in him to turn it up, turn it on against Mexico. You know, go and drag his team to a win, get something against Poland as well. And you lost your first game, yes, but you mm. still got a chance. It's in your hands to win the next two games and go through. That's a good Argentina side, though. Yeah. Mm. That's one of the best Argentina sides. Joe Cole said it's one of the best Argentina sides he's seen for a very long time. I Do you that agree? Might, Do that you might be a bit extreme. I know that they seem to be everyone's favourites, but I don't. I, I look at the eleven now. I don't think many of those players are in their prime. A lot of them are. The wrong side of 30 they're better players so midfield isn't strong yeah at all. yeah no yeah I, I agree but yeah I didn't see why they were maybe they were looking at the 36 unbeaten games and thinking they can carry on but I disagree with Joe Cole on that this occasion